I'm Coco. And I am your muse. Welcome to Venus Clapback, your favorite podcast dedicated to helping black women unapologetically find joy and liberation. That was good. Thank you. I'm it was awesome. unrehearsed and shit. Right? That's good. Thank good you, job, Coco. Thank you. I was well hazed as a young woman. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we're going to get into our topic for today. <laughs> Which I'm excited about. Me too. Muse came up with the theme. Um, We're going to talk about the theme of Yes, Lord, or Hell No. Hell No. (laughs) Setting boundaries. And we're going to specify setting boundaries uh, at work, at home, and in love. Yes. Why do we want to talk about boundaries, though? Because they are, honestly, they're what make you a woman. Mm, Like, that's what separates you from being a little girl to a grown ass woman. Preach, teach these devils. Teach these devils. <laughs> Coco called y'all devils, ladies. <laughs> I'm just saying. When I say devils, make sure you I'm not talking your, about the ladies. Make, make sure you choose your allies wisely. I'm just talking about the uninitiated. <laughs> and obviously, I watch Bodega Boys a lot. So, shout out to the <laughs> <laughs> But now, it's, it's, it's literally like what separates the, the, the children from the adults. Like, being able to set boundaries and maintain boundaries. Um, being able to say what you're for, what you're not for, and be, and being absolutely okay with staying in your lane and not trying to figure out how to murk the space to make it work for everybody. Mm. Like, it's being unapologetic in your choices. Mm. And I think that that's super duper important. And I'm finding that a lot of our sister and they be wanting to cross the lines. They and- ain't doing it. Why don't we <laughs> like? Why don't we set boundaries though? Because I've witnessed the same thing. What's what's the issue? Um, but I mean. I get it to an extent, but for the most part, it's like to attain things that you've, oh, how do I put it? Attain things that like you've been conditioned conditioned to to think that you're not supposed to have. And so then you start cutting corners and you start selling yourself short in order to like blend in, fit in, Mm -hmm. and let me just do this, you know, go along to get along. Um, Because honestly, like our predecessors, the mm-hmm. black women of old, mm-hmm. they um, they did a really good job of that. Okay. And so now, excuse me, like you're in this whole age of like self-love because now all of us are kind of like bucking that. It's like, it ain't work for y'all either. Like <laughs> y'all mad, mad oh, and so depressed. Oh, so you saying the elders did not set boundaries well? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't, I don't think, think so. Either. I don't yeah. think so, honestly. So we're talking about it from, I think, work, home, and relationships. So like... At work, how do you... Well, you know what I call it? What you Can call it? Can I tell it? you what I call it? What you call it? When If you're not setting your boundaries properly, you're basically being a pick-me. And for those who may not be familiar with that term, you're basically saying, pick me, pick me, ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh, pick me. Yeah. And, and it's a lot of y'all out here in these streets. A Stop lot. And, and when, you, when we Stop say it. it, like, you know, just around the way, we're usually referring to women trying to get chose... You know, by a partner, potential partner. But I don't think it just applies to that. I think it applies at work, Mm -hmm. at home, and in, you know, love or dating or what have you. When you're just out here really kind of saying, please pick me, please choose me, and never thinking about what do you choose? Mm -hmm. What do you pick? That part. And you lose yourself. That part. Like, when anybody brings me any, um, like, situation that they're in, my Mm -hmm. first question is like, so what do you want to do? And like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. What do you think? But it, I don't got to live through it. <laughs> exactly. So, like, have you thought through what you want to get out of this situation, mm-hmm. what you want to have to happen? Like, mm-hmm. what do you want to do? And I think that's how people get into the pick-me situation and mm-hmm. having their boundaries um, turn into, like, this this gray matter space because they're depending on somebody else to dictate to them the, the choices and the decisions that they should be making. And I yeah. think that's just, it's a very da- dangerous situation to be in. Yeah. So every time, every question that someone asks you, every sort of proposal that gets put in front of you, you just kind of like, I, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, no. And today, ladies, we want you to never again say, I guess so. No, we want say, you to say, hell yes. Or. Hell no. Or even, yes, Lord. <laughs> Like MC okay, should no okay. <laughs> so okay, let's get you to yes law at work. Yeah. So the first thing we talked about was that you know at work, especially as women of color, you're yes. going to get asked to circle into every project mm-hmm. that exists. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. gonna be like you know, Colette, Coco, can you lead this? 
Muse, can you lead that? Can you bake some brownies for this meeting? Can you help us pick out a location for the baby shower? Can you <laughs> can you help us pick out where we're doing the Christmas party? Can you lead the Krispy Kreme fundraiser? Like <laughs> no. no. Unless all of these things are in um celebration of my promotion mm. or my raise. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna have to decline. It's a nah for me, dog. It's a nah. It's a hell nah. <laughs> and here's why. It's a hell nah and you me. know, I'm glad you brought up like sort of, sort of older generations. Oh, and let me clarify at the top too. I have been um, this person for sure in You've my been younger a days. I, I won't say that I was a pick me because it definitely not necessarily according to like the dating space. When you think but you know like, somebody in my career space, I didn't know what I liked. I didn't mm. know what I wanted. That's real. I'm just kind of in the last maybe seven or eight years getting to a space where I know myself well enough to say that's for me. That ain't for me. Yeah. So I think I'm glad you brought up the elder generations because a lot of us got taught by those elder generations, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. You got to get it how you live. Go along like, to get along. Go along to get along. Show up. Be the first one there. <laughs> make coffee for everybody in the office. Know whether your boss likes a sausage McMuffin or an egg McMuffin. Like, no. That was mm-hmm. 1977, 1997 even. Right. But in 2019 and beyond, um, you know, we realized that we don't anymore have to prove our humanity in workspaces. Right. We show up as our full selves, unapologetic, full black selves, full Latinx selves, what you know, whatsoever you may be, full queer selves. Right. You know, show up as you. You don't have to come in sort of like picking up these extra little side tasks to try yeah. to overprove that you belong. Right. I totally agree. Now there is a question on the screen that I am going to refer to because Brian there's no has, screen. We do everything off the top of our heads. <laughs> Brian has it in bold red, but the question was, had I ever been a pick me? Hmm. And I struggles with this because I had to think it through. Since we're on the work topic, mm-hmm. like in work, because mm, the last. All the positions I've left, like, definitely were at the point where either I had to choose to either be on the pick me train or, like, choose me train. Okay. So, initially, when I first moved out here and I was working in radio, um, like, that was a lot of concerts, strip clubs, clubs, like, promotions, you know, whatever. And, like, I was the only black woman on the sales team. Okay. And while I was cool and all, but... Sales is like a a male a beast. dominated you know thing, mm-hmm. and so a lot of these promoters and strip club owners and all that stuff. These are men too. Mm-hmm. Very rarely are they black either. Mm-hmm. And so I remember going to my manager and was just like, um, I was like, dang, like I see the other women, the white women, they would come in. Wait, and why you sound like you just honked up a loogie? <laughs> White. I'm gonna start using that, friend. Can I use white. it? White. Yeah, it has to come from <laughs> the depths of your throat. I was um, ready. But they would come, like you, you knew the days they were going to see their their um, their car salesman clients. Okay. Because the out the attire would be totally different. How did they dress? It was it was a little bit shorter, a little bit deeper in the in the cut than usual. Oh, these were white women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so I remember talking to my boss about that one day, and he was just like, um, well, you know, you just got to, you know, work with what you got, use what you have. And I was like, ooh, I'm straight. So it was the Players Club. <laughs> but I kept wearing what I was going to wear. Sure. And then ultimately, like, my, um, my, my. Portfolio? No, Sales not portfolio. My cutting point mm. was like. Oh, your breaking point. Yeah, breaking point. That's a better mm. word. My breaking point was. Like, I was starting my little vintage store Mm -hmm. online, and Mm then um, somehow the sales manager was talking about me on a lunch break. And my manager comes back to me and was like, hey, you're selling clothes during your hours, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, nah, I'm not. I'm using software to where when I go home at 5, I preset my social media posts so that I'm not doing it on company time or whatever. I'm like, the promo teams use it. That's where I got it from. Yeah. We preset the shit. Wow. That's so yeah. crazy and that you so, got accused of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But meanwhile, like, um, the other... Lambs. Yes. Of God. Yes. <laughs> um, I remember in particular this one lady I was selling for another station. Like, her sister was a flight attendant. Okay. And um, there were, like, some empty cubicles. And, mm-hmm. like, the sister would come in with this jewelry that she's gotten from all these different countries. Sure. And, like, sell on the floor. Sure. And sell she, it she was on hard, the right? floor. 
Mm, no, they're, they're, no. Oh, she wasn't. Okay. She wasn't white. She wasn't black either. But oh, all right. But sell it right on the sales floor. Sure. And then the receptionist mm-hmm. had a friend who was selling like something. Would like take up the whole conference room where we have like do our sales meetings. Mm-hmm. But people want to come. You want to come to me about something that's happened automatically online. It's racial. And they're physically it's doing this. So I was just like, you know what? It took me about a week, and then I just eventually left. Yeah. Um, wow. That's yeah. so crazy, Muse. Like how you and I, we always talk about this go through such similar things Mm -hmm. i literally had like the exact same thing happen at grand canyon university blast city that's right i'm saying it they can't do nothing to me but they accused me of running a business from my desk literally my boss called me in and he he didn't even want to say it he was like somebody came and said to me that you were running a business from what i was doing was i they had seen me um i think i was writing an email or something and it had no was it even that anyway it had the urban league logo on it because i volunteered for the urban league at that time yeah it's Which a is christian a university i would think group. y'all would want me it's a professional development group and i would think y'all would want me doing community service right not to mention my boss also had let me use conference room space in our office for my urban league committee i was chair of the communications mm-hmm. committee mm-hmm. so if it was really an issue it would have come up at that time but what really happened was that about a week before that, one of my coworkers said to me, I saw a picture of you online with the mayor. And from there, they wanted to know, well, what do you do? What do you do outside of here? Why were you around the mayor? Buh, 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 buh. And I didn't properly set boundaries, right? And say, none ya. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then they got in their feelings, I guess, about the fact that I actually, I don't know, volunteer. So you and, had and access so, that they didn't have. But That's the craziest was. part was one of the VPs in the office was literally selling them ugly ass leggings. What do they call their people? Ju- uh, Lula. Oh, Lula Lemon, Lola Lemon, something. It wasn't. I know. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Lula Rose. Or Lula something. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They're like printed and they have like oh, sunflowers and bumblebees else. on yeah. them. Yeah, she was literally selling those out of her mm-hmm. office, but yeah. that was okay. Yeah, of course. Anyway. But you know what? After <laughs> after after that. Is when I became an advocate of my other tip for setting boundaries at work. Okay. Take your vacation. Take your sick days. Like mm, I say it all the time. Say that again. Take your vacation. Take your sick days. Like yes. I say, I say it all the time. If you know me in real life, I've told it to you. If you come to me with any kind of stress, anything going on, I'm like how many hours you got? Mm-hmm. Take a day off. Yep. Like it's, it's in there. It's built in. Like. Yeah. They're giving you some paid sick days. They're giving you some paid holidays. And for you to sit there and act like. Um, you're just accumulating all these gold coins and at the end you maybe cash them out. <laughs> Every company ain't set up like that. You're going to lose that shit should you quit and get fired. Your job's not going to ice it's you It's done. Out, <laughs> <laughs> right. It, it's done. So you might as well just go ahead and take you a sick day every Friday until they and run out. That's I think that really goes to our theme here today because a lot of times we, when you talk about being like a pick me or what have you, it's that you wear sort of your lack of boundaries as a badge of honor. Mm-hmm. Well, it's for, that martyrdom. Like we, we yeah. don't know nothing else but to, you know, I um, I got 400 hours I hadn't been able to use uh-huh. yet. Oh, I, I just, you know, I give the company my last. If they need me, I'm there. I'm always on call. Girl, don't nobody care. I don't, I, I mean, I do care. <laughs> But don't lie. It, those are voluntary decisions. That's right. That's a voluntary decision, sis. You just need to lay that shit down. Go fill out that little PTO paper. Mm-hmm. Click on the hours or whatever you got to do electronically or paper wise. Mm-hmm. And go take you some days. Take your days. These jobs don't care. I mean, mm-hmm. ultimately, even if you have a, a wonderful, supportive workplace, you and your boss are like siblings. Y'all go out to lunch together. That's great. I'm not saying that your manager is a bad person. What we're saying is that these companies, Mm -hmm. you know, if something happened to you, God forbid, that next day your job is going up on Indeed.com. Please believe. Indeed. And I'm. (laughs) Indeed it is. (laughs) (laughs) It sure is. And I know too many black women engaged in disputes trying to get back pay, uh, pay that they're owed. Women of color in general trying to get pay that we're owed. Um, you know, in sort of like arbitrations or whatever, yeah. these companies, you know, they will hang you out to dry and leave you, mm-hmm. um, leave you, you know, broke and trying to figure out what happened, how you let yourself get in that position. So don't give them free interest, uh, interest-free loans nah. of your time. Nah. <laughs> Take your vacation days. On that point, also mind your business, mind your mm. personal business. Hold on, hold to- on, hold on, hold on. We gotta let that breathe. Sorry. <laughs> At work, you need to do what? 
Mind your business. Mind your God. Not that you're running business. a business like we've been accused of, <laughs> but mind your business. Mind your personal business. Mm -hmm. Mind your business business. Mm -hmm. um, social business. Like, now, hold on, hold on. We got to break this down. All, all, all of that. Comfortable. Mind your business means yes. keep your business to yourself. Yeah. And, and stay out of people, other people's business. Let the folks keep their business to <laughs> Because the first thing that's going to happen, well, you know, Ebony was, um, she was at the watering hole, too, when it happened. So, Ebony, can you write a statement? I don't know shit. I ain't see shit. I'm so sorry. Well, Ebony was his work wife. I had wife. my headphones in. <laughs> right before he shot up the place, Ebony was his work wife. Maybe mm -mm. she can give us some Girl, insight. that part. I still, I don't understand the whole work wife, work husband thing. Mm -mm. Somebody had to break that shit down to me, but. Um, I wish my husband would come home to my, he got a work wife. I, <laughs> not mine. Yeah, we going to let that be. <laughs> I'm going to sip it and sip on that. Are you kidding me? Mm. And I wish I would come home to him. I got a work husband, but I work from home, so. If you got, if I got work a work husband, husband that's my problem. We got to make a fish to fry. <laughs> Ooh, where's Sade at? Sade. Oh, Daddy. That's my dog. <laughs> Mommy had a Shout whole other man up here. Shout out to our dog, Sade. <laughs> Keep him watch. But yeah, that mind your business thing is so no, real. No, seriously. You know, and like, go ahead, it, it helps you not to seem like... um. Like if you have, and, and Stan has talked about this as well um, on the show, if you're like a single parent mm -hmm. or if you're dating and mm -hmm. all this other kind of stuff, like just kind of keep some of that stuff close to your chest because yeah. they're cool and all. And just like your boss um, was absolutely aware that you were using the conference room, whatever, whatever, he could have went ahead and cut that conversation short and never brought it to you because he was aware already, right? So while you think they on your side, nope. make sure you, you CYA and all the time. So listen, CYA is cover your ass all mm -hmm. the time. All the time. You don't, you don't, you can engage in some surface top, topic sure, type stuff. Sure, sure. What you have for dinner giggle, yesterday? Giggle. Sure. Yeah, I had yeah. some delicious king crab legs. Yeah. Yeah. What you boil it in? I boiled it in some butter and some garlic, and then I add a little bit of turmeric. That's my secret Ooh. ingredient. It's and good for inflammation, nobody. too. Mm. That's well, what we're doing. We're not I can't invite people. you because we're colleagues, and I mind uh. my business. Boop. <laughs> 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 that was perfect. <laughs> perfect. Yes, mind, mind, mind your business. And then, you know, even with, like, having kids and um, even if you're having conversation and it's sincere about mm -hmm. transportation mm -hmm. or time-consuming or whatever, like, people use that against you. Like, oh, well, she doesn't have enough time for this project. Let me take it. Well, uh, 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 uh. We, we not, we not taking over the, the, the cookie platter. We're not taking over the brownies. We're not taking over cleaning out the fucking fridge on Fridays. <laughs> We're not doing that shit. But we will take on projects that will advance our careers, that will um, progress us in life in general. But Absolutely. that is what we will hell yes to. Can I share a good thing, a, 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 a yes law that my job is doing? Mm -hmm. uh, real quick, my, my, my new job, my current job, it's not new. Um, we have this thing where instead of asking people to volunteer to take notes on our big staff meetings, we rotate it now mm. in alphabetical order. Nice. So everybody from the CEO some equity. to the, you know, whoever, mm -hmm. everybody's taking notes at some point or another because otherwise if you don't try to do something like that to make it equitable, people will continually call on women yep. to take notes. Yep. Just It's just the way we're socialized. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think, and we talk on this show a lot about self-care and I think some people confuse that to whatever feels good, yeah. right? And so yes, it may feel good to go to work and, you know, talk about your kids, talk about your dating life talk about your problems you know things like that it may feel like a release but ultimately like the muse said you setting yourself up because now people are able to make to draw conclusions about you yep. draw conclusions about your work ethic yep. draw conclusions about your character you know what i mean your your aspirations all of that outside of your presence because you've given them all this information you gave about them all the keys. and plus you could just find yourself in messy situations mm -hmm. that you didn't have to be in right because work is your bread and butter that's where you hopefully making your um your money and your yeah. income to survive off of right so you don't want messy situations at work to put it like they used to put it back in the day don't shit with you, where you eat you know what i'm saying <laughs> That part. Don't come in talking too much about, you know, your your escapades over the weekend, mm -hmm. you know, with Jimmy Lee and, and, you know, Jimmy John, because you never know who else is talking to Jimmy Lee and Jimmy John at the office That's <laughs> or good. who's going to look down on you for That's how you good. choose to operate. Because the hell nah for me is dating in the office. Uh, I can't do the whole cold work situation. Date? Hell nah. What if you're I can't. What if you work with Idris Elba? Idris going to have to be in a different building. <laughs> 
<laughs> because ain't no pain that good for me to be dealing with some workplace drama. It's mm. just, you're not about to mess up my check because now I got to come for your neck. Oh, bars. Hashtag bars. That was not a bar. Bars. <laughs> bars. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> that was bars. That was bars. Cut. Take it. I'm a rapper. <laughs> I'm a rapper. I was deemed a rapper when I got here. I'm a rapper till I die. Shout well, out. Die as in when we rap. Because... I'll leave it alone when I walk out the door. But yes, no, we not we don't do the whole mm mm mm. We not doing the sleeping with the coworker thing. Now some of y'all have some great and prosperous marriages out of that, and that's beautiful. That's awesome. Not a lot of y'all. I I <laughs> not a lot of them. No, I've only seen I go left. <laughs> I I I can't. He would have to be like in a he like even if it's like the same company, mm -hmm. but it have to be like I'm in building A, he's in like building D or some shit. Sure. Like. Sure. And, and but me, I probably wouldn't even want to see you at lunch every day either. So yeah, and I mean, it just weird. feels like you're kind of setting yourself up in a sense because yeah. if y'all not working together building your own company, then you're working somewhere you know for somebody, right? And you want to be able to kind of like download and detach from that when you get home, mm -hmm. not still be with your coworker. Ooh. I don't know. That's just my opinion. That's me too. <laughs> well, That's listen, too. we're gonna have to give these people some more of the game. Because I think work is one thing, but when you're talking about, uh, what's next? At home? home? Yeah. I when you're talking so. about at home, it's a whole nother ball game. How can you realistically draw boundaries when you got kids? Mm. Like, and neither one of us does, but we got friends mm -hmm. with kids. Yeah. And we help people take care of their kids. And kids don't care about your boundaries? They don't. They don't care? They don't. So we're going to talk about how in the home life, whether you have kids or you're single or married dating whatever but just or even just as a, a daughter or a cousin a sibling a son a brother you know what have you in your home you got to be able to set boundaries even there set the boundaries sis so we're gonna talk about that in the next uh segment yes. am i right draw the line hold the line <laughs> i feel like that's like a, some football reference mm, maybe not i don't think so i think that's like a <laughs> i think that's some sex ed um, curriculum. Wait, that, football to sex ed? No, it's not draw the line. It's um, it's draw the line, respect the line. That's it's some it's some sexual education curriculum. Anyway, for the babies. Um, so coming up in the next segment, we will continue to talk about boundaries <laughs> at home. Just because you go like this doesn't make us forget all that foolishness. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to Sorry, know. Sorry, my brain went there. But anywho, <laughs> when we come back, y'all, listen to the sounds of Coco's voice on the area where your promo could be for the next 15 seconds. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Welcome back to Venus Clapback, your favorite unapologetic black women's podcast and show. Okay for the popping of the peas. Pop, 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 pop. My name is Pococo. <laughs> Pococo. Yes. I'm your muse. <laughs> the muse. The muse. And today we're talking about the topic, uh, yes, Lord, or hell nah, setting boundaries. So we want you to walk away from this episode with the ability to say yes, Lord, to yeah. every decision you make in your life. Yeah. Not make any decisions uh, under duress or under a feeling of yeah. needing to be validated. Or even anybody. if you have to say hell no. Nah. Like, yeah. make that statement, hell no, nah, and walk the fuck away. You good. Come on now. Yeah. Shonda Rhimes had a book, The Year of Yes, mm -hmm. and I immediately followed that year up with The Year of No. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> We gonna get right back. I didn't into know that. It. Friend. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. To no, know. but I really did. People were like, Colette, could you, Colette, would you, no. could you, would you have time? To nope. I think I think that works definitely if it like fits your personality. So if you're a person, if you're like a people pleaser yes, by I nature, was. and you're just like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll squeeze it in. Okay, I got a little bit of space on this plate. Okay, I can I can add this and I can add this. Then I think I think you should practice no. Just say no I, for the I hell think of you should it. set that boundary for sure. Yeah. And people will come and step to you totally different. Because listen, I'm all about helping people and doing what you can for others. Do unto others, unto the least, all this good stuff. Yeah. But if you are a people pleaser, you going to people please yourself right out of your lifetime. And you're going to be at the end of your life looking back like, wait, Seriously. I never did anything that fulfilled me. At all. And I think I talked about this last season, but I'll just say it again, that when it really came home for me was I had a bad falling out with a good friend. And at the end of the day, she was like, I had, you know, done something for her and uh, didn't appreciate how the the uh, conversation went. And she was like, well, if you didn't want to do it, you should have just said so. Mm. And that sounds real simple, right? <laughs> but for me, it was like, <laughs> I 
should have just said so. Mm-hmm. Why did I say yes to that? Exactly. And then the thing is, if you're a person that is a people pleaser, you got to realize my mom used to say this to me all the time. People will use you like a piece of soap. Okay? Like, and it doesn't mean that they're a bad person. It doesn't mean that people are users. Yeah. It just means that if you offer it up, mm-hmm. they're going to keep rubber dubber dubbing. Yeah. And it's just human nature. I mean, any of us. Yeah. If somebody offers a constant, you know, service or presence, we'll be like, all right, well, go yeah. ahead then. And what, I, what I've learned as, like, a, a business owner and then just, like, curating events and stuff like that, like, the quicker you can tell me no, like, no, I can't do it, the, the quicker I can make another decision yeah. to, like, go ahead and make a, a, a follow through plan but if you talk about mm-hmm. some yeah yeah I can do it I can do it I can do it and then all of a sudden you burnt out yeah. and I'm still depending on the yes you can do it mm-hmm. now, now we have a problem right. but right. if you can go ahead and tell like nah Eb ain't got it in me I don't got the energy I don't got the time the money or the gas I don't got it okay sis Thank you for I, keeping it real. Thank, thank you for keeping it real, and I'm 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 moving on to like somebody else or a new task or cancel it all together. Yeah. Like the quicker you can give somebody your actual honest answer, yes. um, where, that you can like hold up and mm-hmm. like that's your your word is your bond. Mm-hmm. Like that it helps everybody. Yeah, it helps so, everybody. So in the first segment, you know, we talked about work, and basically, like you just said, you're not making yourself look better by Mm-mm. being a, a yes person at no. work. You're making yourself look worse. Yeah. But another place where it's even harder, I think, to set boundaries. Where would that be? Is in the H O U S E. Oh, okay. I was wondering where you were going with that. The H O to Ooh. the O V. I used to move snowflakes by the O C. Okay. No. Um, no. The house. The house. I thought you were going for home. And I, I didn't oh. know what you were going to do with <laughs> you, that you. you thought I was about to misspell I was, it. I was, I was watching cautiously Same. like, say no. Say no to that boundary. I'm about to totally shame Howard <laughs> University. The hem. The H-O-U-M-E. Right. I was like, oh, S. Okay, she came in with the S. I was, I was glad. At the house, Dad. Yeah. Um, it's hard, glad. especially, I think, for people who have, like, maybe parents that you're taking care of or partners mm-hmm. or kids. Or <laughs> why I say Damn. it like that? Damn kids, kids, sorry kids, or pets, or pets. B- dependents. Yes, dependents you know? are definitely uh, a thing. Um, How can you set boundaries though if that's your situation? My favorite is to like maintain as best as you can because I understand like. It's hard. Babies pop up when they pop out. You know, like shit. You in the bathroom on the toilet. Mama! Yeah, Mama! Yeah. Ava, <laughs> my little guy. My dog, she'd be that. like right at my ankle. She'd be like propped up on my thigh. Like, and when you're done, I have some things we need to talk about. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Can my, you get off my of God my thigh? My godson comes to the door like, Coco! 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 <laughs> like, it's relentless. But I would like to encourage you all to like maintain your life like your hobbies your interests those things that allow you to feel bigger and better than just like a mom a wife like bigger than what you're you are at your um at your nine to five or as an entrepreneur like what what actually like brings you joy outside of things that you are expected to to be joyful about Mm -hmm. you know and it's okay if there's overlap right if it's cooking then great. Go take you some cooking classes, though, that yeah. get you outside of the home environment. If it's sewing or other kind of domestic-like tasks, that's fine. You know, if it's spending time with your kids, great. Yeah. But go do some mommy and me classes down at the YMCA yeah. or take them kids down to the art museum or something. Get But get yourself outside of, like, the confines of your your home routine so that you can maintain, like, that sense of freedom and that sense of mobility about yourself. I agree. I Did say, you say agree? I agree. Okay. Kind of like, you know, how people put, like, the kids' activities and, um, like, the house activities, the plans of the family, like, on the big calendar and the refrigerator and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Like, put your shit on the calendar, sis. Like, eh, 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 Saturday, 8 to 12, don't, don't nobody fucking call me. Don't talk to me. Don't text me. I know it's hard. But It's hard, but it's worth it. But I just try it at least one Saturday a month. At least one. Somebody listening right now, and your entire calendar is you in that minivan, going back and forth to ballet, to gym, yeah. to soccer class, Sunday school, Wednesday night Bible study, um, <laughs> and whatever else. Junior got to go to the barbershop, make your husband take him. But anyway, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah. that's your schedule every day, all day. All we're asking you, sis, right? Because we understand you take pride in that. That's fine. All we're asking you is to try it. Take a Saturday and block off, what'd you say, 8 to 12? 8 to 12 is good. Block off 8 to 12, go get your nails did. The shop's open about 9, you can get in there early. Yeah. 
Go take yourself to breakfast and come on back home. By Get noon. your hair did. You usually do your health, your hair yourself. That's fine. Let somebody wash your hair for you. Just yeah. to see what that's like. Okay. Go get, you know, find somebody that's recommended because you're not going to blame us if you come out bald. But you know what I'm saying? Let yeah. somebody else wash your hair. Get a massage, yeah. right? Do something that you don't normally do. Or go to the do. gym. Or yeah, join an a, a, a intramural team. Or, like, whatever Hell, go to, whatever go to the corral and sit down at the buffet. I don't care. But do something that takes you outside of your commitment. That brings you back to you. Yes. Whatever it was that made you you. And that could be, like... You and the the hubby or the co-parent or whatever take them kids go do what they want to do, mm-hmm. or it's just you and your girlfriends, or it's just you by yourself. Like I'm a fan of just me by myself sometimes, cause me, I, myself, I like Ebony. I, I like Ebony God, a lot. Yeah. And like essentially at the end of it all, cause a lot of y'all are probably like, so I do it. Like I get it. I take I do this stuff by myself all the time, and that's cool. But like if you're kind of like passing it off, it's just like oh, I do this stuff all the time by myself. Then you're not really like. Taking in the moment. Yeah, if you forcing yourself to do yeah. it just, just to say you did something by yourself, yeah. you still that you ain't know. really the thing. Like savor the book, savor each bite, savor the fact that all the lights are off in the house at the same time. Like you can just find those little. Um, I was at this meeting the other day. Those bright spots because okay. we focus so much on like all the negative stuff sometimes. Sure. But just kind of like find those little bright spots. So if all the lights are off in the house and you can count the count the watch, there's gonna be less. That's gonna be lesser on your watch. um on your bill the next month, or the fact that you like went outside and walked around the neighborhood for like 10, 15 minutes. It doesn't mm. it doesn't have to be eight to twelve, but just find your bright spot for the for those days. Yeah. It's so important. If you live in a city with public transportation, just get on a train and ride for an hour from one side of town to the other. Guard your grill, but get on the train <laughs> <laughs> and just take it's a cheap. ride. It's cheap. <laughs> it's cheap. You know, I think too you got to watch your speech. If you're mm. not sure where you fall with this, listen to the way you talk about your days. No, well, yeah. I got to, uh, listen, I ain't got no time because I got to get over here to the such and such. If I don't make it by such and such, I got to this. I need yeah. to that. If Have you a day where you ain't got to do nothing? Yeah. Because that's a day where you are setting boundaries for yourself. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Now... Your other one you had was never putting all your eggs in the basket. Yeah. Now, break that up. Break well, that down. It's kind of a play on what we just talked about. So, some of us, you know, we're like the church lady. I am at church every day of the week. I am chair of Women's Day. I am Lord. chair of the adult choir. I am director of the youth choir. I am. <gasps> you know what? <laughs> Now that now that we're talking about that, because all of those things was me. That's that was me. Like when I in church, you. that was me. I was all of those things <laughs> all together at once, and that was definitely a pick me moment mm. in my life. So you when were I was, a pick me it, for the Lord. Could you just I mean, say damn, a little closer to the? <laughs> I was a I was a pick me for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Don't try to make it sound better. It was that's that's what it was. <laughs> that's that's what it was. <laughs> But you know what? That's not what God wants. <laughs> God wants you to live life abundantly. Yeah, but it wasn't for God though. Like my right. pick, my pick me ness was Come not on. for God. Like Tell it him. was it was on some Aisha Curry type bullshit. I said you it. You didn't have to do Aisha I like that. I said it. I hey, said it. No. Aisha, Aisha somewhere no. sitting down eating a bowl no. of pasta and she going like this. Oh. <laughs> Somebody just kick me in my Listen, bed. Listen, if you can't say amen, just say ouch, sis. Ow. Okay. Ow. But no, like it's real. When she did the whole, she had the whole little um. <laughs> <laughs> she had the whole little, um, you Damn. know, I, I I only dress this way for my husband. I only do this for my husband, blah, blah, blah. And then now she's talking about, oh, well, I want some attention. I want my husband getting attention. I ain't getting no attention. I want attention. And it ain't, listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to straight from a church, an ex-church girl mouth. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you heard that lie right here, cuz. I'm telling you. Teach these devils. I'm telling you. I'm telling you what it was. It's that pick me ness, and you didn't let, you didn't, oh child, you shouldn't have ran off all this. I'm like, hold up, I was a pick me, Jesus. <laughs> I was a pick me when I was like heavy into the church. But yeah. what happened to Aisha is the fact that like, um, you get inundated with these messages that you, in order for you to be a godly woman, mm. in order for you to be a woman that's going to be chosen by a man that's like butt ass and all this other bullshit, <laughs> um, you have to be this way. You have to dress that way. You mm-hmm. have to be um, this kind of way. You have to be in church this many times. You got to be, you know, Skirts below worthy. The knees. Yeah, you got, you got to, to be worthy of leadership. You got to do all this shit or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And so Aisha was doing all those things, mm-hmm. 
And she get up to the top. She at the tip of the top with Steph. Her and Steph making a certain amount of money, all the income or whatever. And so she thinking that all the little floozies and shit are beneath her. And then she go into all these events and she's like, oh shit, these floozies, they in the same place I am. And I worked hard as fuck to be here. They I'm telling you, that's, that's every church girl's worst nightmare. <laughs> these hoes got here and I've been saving myself all my life. And you just pop up. Listen, hoes, and you getting hoes all are these winning. riches. You getting all the milk and honey right now. Hoes are winning. It's, it's an undeniable fact. Ooh, child, that just took me back. But yes, that was the ooh, child. Well, I think I that felt that you felt it in your oh, shando. You felt that in your shando. In my shando. Oh, <laughs> rumpostilski. <laughs> rumpostilski. God, that's the end. Thank you for joining today's episode. <laughs> Oh, I feel it. Oh, I should have bought a hundred, but I bought a Kia. Oh, I feel it. Oh, oh, girl, that hit me. That hit me, child. You felt it. I felt that. Dun, 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 oh, dance to the pick me. Dance to the pick me. I can tell you that that's exactly what it was. I that's exactly you. what it was. Well, it's, Ooh, it's so commonplace, and that's why I say don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Meaning, don't put all your eggs in the church. Don't yeah. put all your eggs into your children. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. It's real. Okay? You don't have to be super saver mom to prove yourself. Your children will benefit more from a fully realized, self-actualized yeah. mama yeah. than from somebody who's obsessed with them and constantly helicoptering in on their lives. Um, don't put all your eggs into your partner. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Your partner don't want a, a stalker. Your partner wants somebody who has something going on for themselves. Right. Who ain't just good for laying on her back. Because I'm the kind of woman. <laughs> I was quoting x That song always comes to mind. Anyway, um, you know what I'm saying? Don't put all your eggs in any one basket. Like, yeah. stay, you know what I'm saying, um, multifaceted. And so that you can mm-hmm. really feel good about whatever it is that draws your energy. Not just the one place where you put all your energy because you feel like you had to. Yeah. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. And then, you know, for those, I, I feel like I'm probably leaving out our single friends, right? Because we're talking a lot about being mm-hmm. like a, a partner and a. Well, not a, really. Um, I mean, single moms. Because I, I received all of that. Yeah, single, single moms single. can um, can check in on that. But I think, too, for our single friends, when it comes to dating, don't put all your eggs in one basket either. But we're going to talk about yeah, dating we not in the there next yet. We're not segment. There yet. Um, so, yeah, now let's talk a little bit more, though, about this home thing. This is this one is funny to me, right? Mm-hmm. So neither of us are parents, Mm-mm. but we have a lot of friends with kids yeah. and family members, and I feel like I hear from a lot of them bedtime mm-hmm. as a big boundary that gets kind of yeah, smudged. Mm-hmm. Kids want to come jump in the bed, sleep in the bed, yeah. and even if you don't all have of a sudden kids, they gotta go pee. Some of y'all got pets, <laughs> and y'all out here fighting about the pet getting in the bed too. So we're going to put that on the list, too. Yeah. I'm not going to front. I got a new puppy this year. And my puppy was so cute. She was just a little baby. She and I was like, so Brian, cute. she could just lay on the couch with us. It would be fun. She mm-hmm. was like, hell no. Yeah. Ava's a couch, <laughs> Ava's a couch dog. She's yeah. not interested in, in peasant things at yeah. all. Yeah. No. But I think it's actually a good idea to draw that boundary. Yeah. When, especially when it comes to your kids. Because what I've heard is that... When you're letting your kids develop that habit of sleeping in the bed with you, Mm -hmm. it's other things that can't happen in the bed. Mm -hmm. And so then that part of your relationship becomes compromised. And then you got a whole other set of issues. Yeah. I ain't got no kids or nothing, but my boundary for the bedroom is there's no television in my bedroom. Mm. Like that, no. Speak on that. Because you're not about to just roll over on me and watch TV instead of watching me. That's some bullshit that's not about to happen. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sleeping in sex. Like, <laughs> the hell else you trying to do? You yeah. want to read? Read in the daytime, not while I'm laying here naked. <laughs> Shit. You better be reading this. You know that. I can write on my chest. You can read that shit from tit to tit, chapter to chapter, cover to cover. I cannot with you. I'm just saying. You just fool. Saying. This is another one that we didn't talk about, but it just came to mind. I try to draw the boundary of not doing work in my bedroom. Because, uh, like, I work one. remotely. Yeah. And so I work from my laptop, and wherever I am is where I work. Mm-hmm. I'm at the coffee shop. I'm in the living room, the home office. And some days I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just stay in bed and keep my laptop. But what I learned was 
that compromises your sleep quality. It does. If you're constantly turning your bed into a place of work, mm -hmm. like you sitting there writing papers, you, you grading can never really papers, rest. all my teachers, teacher hive, you in here grading papers in the bed, you know, or people that do use laptops, you clickety clackety in mm -hmm. the bed. Mm -hmm. Not only are you disturbing your partner, yeah. RIP to their rest, but <laughs> you're also training your body like on a cellular level, yep. that this bed is a workspace. Yep. So then you put the laptop or the papers to the side, you mm -hmm. turn over, close your eyes, and your body's like, mm, nah, bitch, we here yep. to work. Yep. <laughs> and so it kind of helps to be able to, like, around the house, have a designated, have designated spaces where you work yeah. and designated spaces where you rest. Yeah, for sure. Because your brain doesn't really turn that off. Right. So in the, in the times I do work from home, like, the laptop is definitely, like, on the kitchen table. So mm -hmm. it's like a whole action. I have to, like, get up. Yeah. Which then kind of leads you to, like, preparing for your day as well yeah. and you can do that with like your phone at night you can mm -hmm. put the phone on the charger like away from um the bed yeah um it doesn't have to be far because i know emergencies and shit happens or whatever you can do it in moderation whatever works for you but it at helps put it across the room yeah it helps to like get you up out of the bed like even if you just put it in the bathroom because mm -hmm. that's where you're gonna go first anyway um yeah. so that we're not like falling asleep with it in our faces and busting our faces open with the whole phone <laughs> and all that stuff like just kind of create some create boundaries with 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 these little tchotchke things that we use to these kind devices. of to intentionally yeah. distract us from connecting with people to keep us distracted from actually doing our work that is on the laptop on the nightstand <laughs> 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 like kind of get used to kind of disconnecting from those things that aren't really feeding you. Yeah, and you know, I've I've also heard a lot of parents say you got to limit your kids screen time. Mm -hmm. Um because if you leave it to them, my 2-year-old godson already, he's like mm -hmm. baby shark doo doo. Mm -hmm. Baby shark, doot doot. He says doot yep. doot. He don't know it's just baby my shark. Niece is on, doo -doo um, on the end. My niece is on PJ Masks. And, and but what his it's serious thing. Yeah, and but what my little cousin does, cousin sister, his mom, shout out to Courtney. What she does is she only lets him use screens on the weekends, and oh, even nice. then it's like only for a few hours. Nice. But even just that little bit, he knows baby shark. And, you know, because otherwise what's happening is that, you know, your kids are constantly stimulated. Mm -hmm. And I think the same goes for us. Like, for yeah. me, and I've been bad about it lately, but what I try to do is not be on my screen right before I go to sleep. Because mm. I found myself having sleep problems, and that was oh, one of the things that kind of helped me. So good. I had to draw that as a boundary. That's good. That's good stuff. Which brings me to our final topic for this segment before we get into them dating boundaries. Because I know y'all want to hear about those with your oh, yes. thirsty selves. I think... <laughs> Social media. Mm. And we, we're talking about the home right now, but social media is all up and through our homes. Yes, it it's is. all up and through my home. Yes, I ain't gonna speak is. for y'all, but yes, I know I'm is. guilty. I, I create heavy boundaries with that shit. Yeah. Block is my friend. Unfriend Ooh, is my, my friend. My block muscle is strong. Unfollow is my friend. And you know something that I had to like start doing, um, maybe like a month or two ago, is to like get my ass up out of some of these groups because some of y'all motherfuckers are depressed as hell. <laughs> And y'all just be posting and having a whole ass diary in these groups. And I just had to like, because then I was getting like emotionally wound up and involved uh. in the in the, in the the messaging of it. Like, yeah, sis, leave his ass. And yeah, bro, she's trash. And I'm like, let me just, because these voluntary ass decisions and they're going to sleep with each other in the, at the end of the day. Let me just. They're going to be right back. Let me just. Just like, uh, what's his name? Let me go mind my business. Uh, Regine, uh, Lil Wayne's daughter. God bless her. Well, that's right. You don't pay attention to mm -mm, the celebrities. Don't be known. She's been breaking up back and forth, back and forth with her boyfriend. She's like 22 years old. Oh, that's normal. Like, people don't realize that's what you do. That's but we normal. try, you know, because of social media mob mentality. Yeah. Yeah. We try to hold young kids to the same standards of like forty year olds. She don't know no better. Yeah, that's real. So yeah, I can understand how groups but can kind of bring if I'm that right, if I'm, is, isn't he older than her though? Yeah, he's older and he got kids. So he's, he's like over thirty, I think. I feel like that's some, and I think she's either twenty or twenty one. That's some of that bullshit ass manipulation, y'all dudes. They need to go what? hold him and console him and oh, tell yeah. him he's doing that bullshit on purpose. They love to go find a little tenderoni, child, and um, sell her a dream. Mm. Yeah, that'll be another episode. Well, <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm, I'm. That's all I got to say about that. But yeah, I had to start coming out of those groups. Um, I had to like put some of them on snooze, so I'm not like up in there commenting. Cause um, like sometimes the the group people will put up like the top commenters, mm -hmm. and my name be up there, and I'm like, God damn it, Emily, did you not have shit to do today? I'm like, yeah, I had lots be of commenting. things to do. Cause I be lurking, yeah. and then and I, I be I seeing just, you coming. <laughs> I have to just come on. Let me just come on back up out of here because. What, what do you think about? Wh when do you think is a good time to post the person that you're dating, if ever? Like, what's your rule of thumb? Now. Yeah. At these thirty-four años of life. Um. See. 
Shit. At my funeral in the... <laughs> <laughs> in the obituary. Ebony's special friend of 67 years. <laughs> That's what I'm going to have. obituary. That's what I'm going to have. I don't know. I'm going to have a boyfriend by Christmas, but I don't know. Um, I think... <laughs> I think that I'm just saying because this that is sound like some urban ass Hallmark movie. <laughs> I'm gonna have a boyfriend by Christmas. I'm gonna have a boyfriend starring, by Christmas. Sorry, Tamala Man. <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna come cra- cascading across the screen. <laughs> I'm gonna have a boy grasping at inanimate objects by Christmas. Santa will leave him under my tree. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna have y'all yeah. not gonna stop me. Nobody no. else said cares. No. Y'all just... And then it'll be it'll be like some low budget like Forrest Whitaker that's gonna be my boyfriend. Oh, Forrest Whitaker is not low budget. He's an Oscar winner. No, I'm saying it's gonna be low, more low budget than Forrest Whitaker. Oh, it's gonna be um, Woods Whitaker. Yeah, because you know you know they gotta they gotta take me down a notch, so they gotta teach me a lesson. And he's gonna be like a blue collar worker. And since I got all these, you're gonna be a successful and career woman yeah. that needs to be brought down a peg or yeah. two. Yeah, yeah, that's that's gonna be me. And um, but I have it by Christmas that's because funny. that's what that's that's the black woman's plot in life. Coming by Christmas from Black River Life Media. All right, so we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come but back, but no, I didn't answer the question for real. Oh, you didn't? My bad. But I feel like, Oops. <laughs> are you, you think I'm going to have a special friend on my obituary for 67 years? Really? Come I would, I don't doubt anything you say that you'll do. <laughs> you was cold hearted. <laughs> Ebony, I mean, I'm not cold hearted. Mu- okay. The muse my is boundaries are solid. The muse's boundaries are my, solid. My S-O-L-I-D-T. boundaries are solid as fuck. Yeah. The muse is not out here playing. Let's talk about it in the next segment a little sure. bit because I love your boundaries. Sure, but <laughs> I think I think it's imp- I think it would be beneficial to both people mm-hmm. if they had the conversation about social media. Yes, and um, taking note of like how the person already posts on social media by themselves. Yeah. So if they're not a regular poster, then get out your feelings because <clears throat> that's not what they're doing already. Right. Um, but if they are, and you just if they're posting the picture where y'all were together and like you're not in it um, but you haven't had that conversation Mm -hmm. then I still say to keep your emotions at bay until you've had the communication I'm just huge on communication like unless you've talked about it whether that's at one month or one year whatever whatever works for the people involved I say I couldn't agree Um, more because there's so many people out here that are like you should never post your partners on social media and then there's people that's like if you really love me you'll post me on social media neither one of those is accurate like like the muse just told y'all you gotta communicate and know what works for y'all I'm I'm, I'm gonna give you an easy barrier if you post that shit and he hits your toss and take it down leave that motherfucker (laughs) you are not the girlfriend (laughs) Mari has gotten the test results in (laughs) You are not. You are not the girlfriend nor the wife at, at all. Somebody is at all. It's not you. Exactly. All right, so that's. Or tough y'all didn't love. have that conversation. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's tough love, but it's real. Yeah. Speaking of tough love, we're gonna come back in the next segment and talk about how the muse sets boundaries oh, in her dating situations, and also how all of us can right in dating, in love, what have you, so that we can be happy and healthy and whole by Christmas. And sometimes that involves tough love. Wait, what? <laughs> sometimes it involves tough love for the people that you might be seeing or interested in. Sometimes yeah. you got to hit them with the Heisman. All mm-hmm. right. So we're going to talk about that in the final segment of today's episode. Uh, yes, Lord, or hell no. Nah, hell setting nah. boundaries right here on Venus Clap Back. Back, y'all. I don't know what's happening, but welcome back to Venus Clapback. <laughs> we have the most awesomely hilarious crew ever, and y'all will see who they are in our behind the scenes clips that we will make available at venusclapback.com. So make sure you go there, follow us on Instagram at, uh, at Venus Clapback, and uh, Facebook, and even go to our YouTube, again, Venus Clapback, to see who is behind the camera fooling acting a fool, mm. making us laugh as we try to deliver this high quality content to y'all. We actually are really overcoming yeah. serious strife and obstacles trying to record this show with these yeah. people <laughs> making us laugh. It's a struggle. On set. Nah, we have yes. so much fun. We do. But speaking of people who make it hard, <laughs> Muse, I think that <laughs> we should talk a little bit in this segment. Because <laughs> the Muse be wild. 
wilding, right, audience? Right? No, tell me how I be wilding. The Mills be in here saying stuff completely left field, and we supposed to keep straight faces and continue delivering the show. Like, it's hard for me. This is all I'm saying. All right? This is all I'm saying. Sweet, low, sweet chariot for me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't make it hard for Coco. Coco is just resistance to the freedom that I bring into her life. That's all. You do bring freedom into my life. That's why you're my friend, which brings me to the first point of this segment. <laughs> That's which a good segue. The theme is yes, Lord, or hell no, nah, you got to set boundaries. Yeah. <clears throat> and one of the main boundaries you need to set in your dating life <laughs> is to <laughs> have your own friends. Have your own friends. The muse is my friend. She don't get to be friends with my partner. And no, I'm playing, <laughs> they are friends. <laughs> But the thing is, you gotta have. You can have mutual friends. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. But also have your own friends. Tell, you tell you me. need to have. You need to have separate sets of friends. And now I know, like when people are moving to places and then they meet people together at the same time. Uh-huh. But like when shit pops off, then you ain't. You 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 don't got no you don't got no friends. Well, I wasn't thinking of it in adversarial to, to terms. But, but no no no. <laughs> I mean, that's on the adversary side. But in general, like. It's just, it goes back into like having your own life. Yes. Like have your own friends. Go have your girl time. Go have your guy time. Like I have a really hard time with guys who try to date me that like just fresh out moved out here. And they haven't like established their own. What's out here? Where do we live? In, 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 yeah. We might have people listening in, that in, they never heard. In Hellazona. <laughs> Hellazona? Um. Who haven't like established their own like friend groups or their own like networking circles or mm-hmm. whatever. And it's cool because then they have all this time to like text and call me all day. And that's great because I do like for guys to be like passionate and excited about me. Okay. But 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 what are you doing? <laughs> what else you doing? What, what can you 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 don't wanna have a guy's night with your coworkers? You don't Something? you you don't go bowling? You don't, go, you don't want to go by yourself? <laughs> and you this is how some some people Jesus. are messing up the game for the rest of us. Yeah. Some of y'all are out here demanding that your partner focus on you. No, I you don't know, want it. 28 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. They got to go find four other hours that don't even exist. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like, over focus on you, be up under you constantly at the house. If they're not home, you're texting and calling them constantly. If you call them and you hear them having fun in the background, now you got a hundred questions. Mm-hmm. Who you with? Where y'all at? How long y'all gonna be? There, cut that out. Yeah, no. Let your partner have fun and have friends. Let me miss you a little bit. Yeah. Just, just let me miss you a little bit. I'll be here. <laughs> if we living together, guess what? We pay these bills here. Guess what I'm going to be when you get home? I'm going to be right goddamn here running these lights up together. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. Like, and if we, even if we don't live together, like, just let me miss you. Like, I'm a, and I, and, well, that goes into like another point. But like, and we're not going to be kicking it every day. Right. Especially now, if we're in a relationship, that may be a little bit different. But if we're dating, you don't get all my motherfucking time. <laughs> and I feel like you hear a lot of young people, and when I say young, like teenagers, 20s, mm-hmm. who wonder about this. Yeah. Like, is it bad that my partner doesn't want to be with me all day, every no, day? It's no, it's not bad. It's not. It's not bad. You need to figure out why you're, why you're available all day, every day. <laughs> That's the question you need to have. Because obviously then, <laughs> there's some hustle out there, some business. <laughs> the crew is co-signing us right now. Shout we heard out. Some we heard some feelings. we heard some feelings in the building. Shout out to producer Graham. <laughs> in the building. Sorry, sorry. It's real though. Yeah. Why are you available? You, sh- you yeah. shouldn't be available all day, every day. Because you're not doing something that you could be doing to better yourself. Absolutely. Or better the world. On the In the lines of doing something that you... In the lines of you could be doing something. Mm-hmm. So, like, the next point is um, holding people accountable to what they say. Mm-hmm. So, since we're talking to black women, we're talking about men or women or whoever you date. Whoever you, you, you get down with, child. I ain't Non-binary. Whoever, whoever you take an interest in. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Whoever you take an interest in, if they're like, oh, we're going to do this on this date. Or if you invite them to come and support you in doing something that you're wanting to do. Then hold those people to the, to that standard because who they are the first time you, the they people are who they are when you meet them. It don't take six months for the for the little representative to fall off. They are who they are when you meet them. I, I and it's it served me well. I dodged a lot of bullets, but so like I witnessed the muse oh, dodging a bullet in real time. You can't stop me from telling this story. Go ahead, <laughs> Just child. recently, we out doing one of our uh, speaking engagements. And a charming young Afro-American fellow. No, he was African. <laughs> oh, African. Okay, I didn't even know. Shows up 
to support the muse, but he shows up at the end of the program. Way past and the end. And me, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm very like, you know, oh, I try to be over polite still. Hell so I'm no. like, oh, well, you know, well, thank you for coming. Also, I'm married to somebody else, so I don't care. <laughs> um, but I'm like... <laughs> Oh, you know, thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting us. But then they step off to the side, and I hear the muse go, I mean, it's over now. <laughs> you don't miss the whole thing. So I got somewhere to be. I'll catch up with you. And I'm like, I was like, yeah, damn. Well, here's the thing. His whole face was on the floor. I was like, face clean up on all night. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing, Coco. Because I'm a very, my communication is clear. I don't really mince my words on much. And you would think people would appreciate that. You would think men past 35 would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But the the, the games they love to deal in, and I just can't, I can't, I can't. So upon meeting him, um, we went out on a few dates or whatever, and um, essentially we got to the whole, well, what are you looking for a conversation? Okay. And that was fine. Um, And so I told him that, you know, as we are making strides with being his clapback, we're making strides. I'm making strides with my business. Mm-hmm. I'm making strides professionally, mm-hmm. personally, like whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end of the night, like after the the ceremony we have with the, um, the Onyx Awards and all that kind of stuff, like mm-hmm. I get home and by my damn self. Like yeah. I'm I'm in a place now where like I want me a little cheerleading corner. I want somebody that's there to like help support me, take um, help me set up these. Uh, paint and sips and shit. Take down these goddamn easels and out to, toss some uh, paint in the trash. Your art party, yeah. The muses, wonderful oh, yeah. paint and sip business. Yeah, um, I want somebody that's you know there to like champion me too. Like I've been championing me for thirty four years, so I'm I'm ready to share that space with somebody. And so we he he, he kind of shared in the same sentiment or whatever. And then you know then I don't know why dudes be sending me the the book long text messages, but ladies don't don't. Don't think these dudes will not send you books on books on books and text messages because they fucking will. Okay? And you hit their ass with a K. All right? Um, <laughs> Don't do that. Well, shit. So, that happened. <laughs> At least give them the okay. So, that <laughs> happened. And um, he, we, we shared the same sentiment or whatever. And then, like, maybe if we keep we keep hanging out, dating or whatever. And then um, one of those weekends, I can't remember how long ago it was, whatever. Mm. But he did ask me to be in a relationship with him. Oh. And I was just like, well, I prefer us to keep dating because you're new here to Phoenix. You, you're, I've been able to, like, show you my world. Mm. I don't know anything about you. And mm. I'm not... I'm not crossing over into that. That's I don't know the boundary. Number one, I don't know who your friends are. Do you got some fucking friends? I need to know how you are with your friends, what you do on your own time. Because all I know is you text and you call me. And here's a quick tip. I need you to have a life. If, if they don't have no friends, they're probably a future mass shooter. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, I, I'm need, joking. I need to know what, what your life looks like outside of me. And mm-hmm. it's not for me to be to be able to like come in and assert myself in it, but... I, are your friends a healthy circle of men that will like hold you accountable? Like if we should get into a relationship, like I'm looking at all that shit. You know, <laughs> or what are I mean? there a bunch of dudes that play video games in the basement all day talking about why bitches ain't shit? Exactly, <laughs> and you you need to know that. So anyway, um, so I I decided to like let's just keep dating and then we can revisit this conversation some other time. Yeah. Um, so I get these text messages like I wanna I wanna be there to support you. I wanna I wanna do this. I wanna be in the background with you. Like you don't have to do this by yourself. Yada yada blah blah blah. Mm. And I'm the kind of chick that's just kind of like, you can do all this talking all the fuck you want, but I need to see the talking and the actions line the fuck up. Like, get Action. in line. Action. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. So, I'm um, sorry, producer Brian. <laughs> so the talking went terrible. on. That's why. He did, the, he did the whole, you know, I want to be there for you. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, okay, cool. I have an event coming up. Mm-hmm. So you, you gave him an opportunity to, to show and To please. come and support. Yeah. Um... To come and support, I'm, I'm laughing because he probably gonna watch this by the time it come out because he was heavy on being a slap bag. Because he got all the keys, right? Hey, listen, listen, listen. Oh, you're well. doing a service by allowing us to tell your story. Oh, well. You're doing a I ain't service. Nobody, I ain't okay. telling nobody his name, but okay. he'll be all right. So anyway, um, so the event comes around mm-hmm. and it was like nine or ten o'clock the, in the morning, yep. and he was he was like, "Hey, how you doing?" Blah blah blah, and I was like, "Well." I'm getting ready, I'm just running some errands before I head over to the event or whatever. He was like, oh, okay, same thing. He was like, I'm going to get an oil change. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, panel started at 11.15. We may have started about 11.30. Mm-hmm. We were done at about 12.30, maybe. It may have been about an hour panel. Yeah, close to um, one, maybe. So we get to ming- mixing and mingling. We're taking pictures. We're ordering food in the back. 
And it's about 1 15, 1 20, and I get a text message like, hey, are you around? Around the fuck what? <laughs> I said, I'm in the back. I'm about to leave though. Yeah. Cause I, I hadn't even told y'all, like I had like other stuff to do for the studio. Right. And so um he makes his way back there and I was just like, What you here for? <laughs> she literally gave him that face, y'all. I was, I was just like, you I missed, was embarrassed. You've missed the whole him. thing. And so, um, to the as he walked me to my car, because I was like, I'm still leaving. And ladies, if you got your day set, keep on with your fucking day. Don't let these people Can we can we dig in right now? Don't here? let these people sway you off your shit. Let's dig in there. Sure. Don't let them sway you off your shit. What do we mean? If you had a time frame that y'all agreed to, yeah. right? And we're not people. This is this is the game that you're gonna hear. This is where the benefit of me being an old ass thirty seven year old broad works to y'all's benefit. Cause I don't heard it all. They're going to say to you, "Oh, well, it seems like you're too busy for I me." Am. Yes, I am. I, I am. actually am. I yeah. am too busy for you because what they try to do is appeal to that nurturing, sensitive nature that a lot of us have, mm -hmm. or a lot of us have been raised to have, where we don't want to offend. We don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Yeah. So then your your reaction then, young sis, is going to be, no, no, no. It's not that I'm too busy. It's just, you know, I had some things. And now you're apologizing for just having shit to do. No. Which he got shit to do, mm -hmm. you know. But it's the real, what it really is, is this emotional manipulation. It so is. they're going to say, it seems like you're too busy for me. Or they're going to say, um, I mean, cut me a break. Why are you being so hard? Why are you being so cold-hearted why are you being a bitch if they say that you need to probably call 911 but Child. you know what I mean it's gonna be something to try to make you feel like you're being too aggressive again that's emotional manipulation appealing to the part of you that doesn't want to be seen as an angry black woman yep. and, or a bossy woman I just embrace this shit I'm, I'm, I'm angry I'm angry all right I'm angry uh, what's next <laughs> I'm just angry because really the thing is, you know, nobody ultimately really wants a pushover. No. People act like they do, but nobody no. wants a pushover because no. if you're a pushover in terms of your time when y'all are dating, you're going to be a pushover as a mother. You're mm. going to be a pushover as a partner. You're going to be a pushover with y'all's finances. You're going to push your ass right on over into that coffin because you're going to be dead as hell. Oh, shit. Tired <laughs> and stressed the fuck out. I'm just saying. There it is. <laughs> so, yes, I carried on my day. Don't let them get you off your, your shit. And, but this happened once before, too. Well, wait, wait, wait. I, I want people to, to hear the resolution of the story. Not resolution. But this is the best part to me. Because uh, so we make so many decisions and, and like pick me decisions because we think we scared that the dude is going to leave or go away. So this happened. And then I'm out with the muse the next day. We hang out a lot. Don't judge us. Judge your mama. And <sighs> she gets a text message, like she said, like this book-length text message. Of you know, uh, buh, 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 buh. I don't know what all it said, but it's like, yes, I did. Basically, I'm but sorry. Like, I'm sorry <laughs> and the thing is, my point is that as y'all hear this story, you probably thinking, oh man, she was kind of hard on him. No, she wasn't. He knew she was right. And that's why he because kept sniffing around. Here, 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 <laughs> here's how you. Here's how you go ahead and get them red that red flag shit out the way. Because, again, people are who they are when you meet them. Because initially when I met him, he said that he doesn't lie. He just kind of forgets to tell the truth. And I was like, I'm going to put a pin in that shit. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to put a pin in that. I was like, oh, okay. Right. Okay, forget to tell the truth. All right, cool. <laughs> and, like, people people be trying me. I don't know. People... I don't know why people be trying me though. That's a new level of the game. I don't know. I don't even know that one. I'm like, tell me why are you trying me? Because I'm about to, you know, I'm getting to this shit. Oh yeah. Like right. So um, so then it says the whole like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Woo -woo -woo -woo. Like that's fine. Um, what what messed him up on his own was again he had no friends or nothing like that. So like. You're, we're texting regularly. Mm -hmm. We're talking regularly. Mm -hmm. Like on the phone, having a conversation. We'd meet up, link up, whatever. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me, I just talked to you at 10. Mm -hmm. And you said you're getting an oil change. And then all of a sudden at 1.20, mm -hmm. are you around? Mm -hmm. Nowhere in there, because the, the, the explanation was that he had to take his cousin to the dentist or the doctor or something like that. Now, in that time frame, a text message suffices to where it's like, I'm gonna be later than I thought. I'm so sorry. Like, I had to do something. Somebody came up with family. Sure. Cause I'm not about to probe cause shit does happen, shit right? Shit happens. But you didn't. You didn't. And so that was out of your character. 
And and so you forgot had, to tell the truth about it, and not a bitch in your ass. Because I sent him a text message today, and was just like, I'm good. Ooh, but let me roll the tape back because you said that y'all established earlier yeah. on that both of you were looking for supportiveness, mm -hmm. like somebody to be able to champion your achievements and events and like things that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's listening right now, and you're like, oh, well, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal to me. It don't matter. It was a big deal to the muse. You know what I mean? They had already, she had already established right. in talking to him, hey, I'm looking for somebody that will show up yep. and support me in my endeavors. And then he got invited to an endeavor and didn't show up. And did not so show up. my point in highlighting that is for those folks listening, it don't matter if it's something that's important to other people. You may be looking for somebody that's gonna sprinkle sprinkles on your cakes and your cupcakes. All right, that's not a big deal to me. I don't care if producer Brian sprinkles sprinkles on my cupcakes, but if that's important to you yep. and you offer a dude an opportunity to sprinkle and he don't sprinkle, then he need to go because you set that boundary, you yep. set that standard of saying what it is that you want and what you need. You may want somebody that's a hustler out here going for money. You may want somebody that has a really strong social justice analysis. You may want somebody <laughs> that knows how to plant garden vegetables. I don't know what you want, but you got to know what you want so you can set that boundary Absolutely. obviously the muse know what the fuck she wants. <laughs> yeah so be like the muse which goes into the next point which makes me um able to make these decisions and be very very clear on where i am because i have a whole ass life by myself amen and it's at this point it's just nice to include somebody else in it mm -hmm. but should that be you know should that take some should that take until christmas <laughs> um <laughs> I, I, i'm not sitting around just waiting to get quote unquote chose, chose. You know, like I have other things that that fulfills my life mm -hmm. um, outside of a a testicle carrier. So that's that's how I feel about that. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? And then the fourth. <laughs> Why are you just see? This is what I was talking about at the top of the segment where the muse just says stuff, and we supposed to just act like it didn't just happen. <laughs> testicle carrier? D they don't carry testicles. I mean, I assume. I don't carry testicles. <laughs> Go ahead. I get with you. I just Okay. What is Brian doing? <laughs> Are you awake? <laughs> I'm just saying. What's the next point? The next point is, sis, you ain't got to be <laughs> more like you got to get the. You got the, to cut the ball. What movie is that? <laughs> the next point is, sis. Again, maintaining your own life, your whole ass life by yourself, you're not gonna be readily available to these people all the time. And that's cool, because I'm gonna tell you what d dudes ain't gonna tell you that they actually like. They actually like the mysteriousness of you. Like, they don't, they're gonna, they're probably gonna hit you up on a regular basis, and they're gonna try to be consistent, like, oh, let me take you out, let me do this, blah, 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 blah. And as soon as you give them everyday access without the actual commitment, babe, they're gonna burn your ass out, they burnt out, they on to the next. Keep you some mystery, keep your life. Again, and if, um, like my situation, if you had some shit planned where you had some time blocked out for them specifically and then they messed that all up, continue on with your day. Like, they have to catch you on the next go round. Don't make exceptions in your schedule for people who have not decided to permanently include you in their lives. Okay. Accommodations are for the Holiday Inn. So, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think this is probably. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew. pew. This is one of the most important points we're going to make on this episode. For real. And, but somebody I know is listening. Oh. And they're going to take this point the wrong direction. I don't care. It's a sister listening. That's No, no, no. One of the sisters is listening, and she's going to say, okay, have some mystery. Cool. So I'm going to speak in code, and no, I'm, I'm going to pretend, pretend to have something to do when I really don't. Nobody told you to do that. Nobody no. told you to lie. Nobody no. told you to fake it. Go out and do the things you enjoy. Yeah. Like, go out and, you know, or if you want more money, go get you another job. Or if you're looking to learn how to do extra skills so you can have a side hustle, go take you a class, join you a book club. And you heard us talk about this in season one. We were mm -hmm. talking about, you know, some of the best ways to find love is to find yourself, right? Yep. That still holds true here. And in doing so, right, the mystery will occur naturally. Cause you gonna have shit to do. You got shit to do, <laughs> and so you got you're not to serve, always gonna be available. Shit to draw, <laughs> things to move, 
stuff to make, child. payroll to calculate, some taxes to get done, trips to take, trips to goddamn take. Take you some trips. Listen, I met some interesting people at the gate as I was swiping my my boarding pass, and then they sit you like this is uh, when I was flying um standby when I had them flight benefits. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. Um, <laughs> but you get them little seating assignments, man. Yeah, man, shit's good. It's a beautiful thing, man. It's find a find thing. stuff like traveling to do. Yeah. Now, some of y'all, you do all of the stuff that we just said. Yeah. You're busy. You're booked. You know what I mean? You're out here um, living your own life. Let's. A good example of this is uh, our good sister Wendy Williams. Mm. You got a lot going for yourself. You're yeah. talented. You got your own friends. You know, you a boss, and yet somehow it still doesn't work out for you. Mm. And that's because this boundary right here didn't get drawn. You didn't trust what you heard the first time. Listen, listen here. Trust what you hear the first time. My good sis Wendy did an interview where she said she knew over the years that her husband was stepping out. But she didn't imagine that he would actually have a whole side baby. Let me tell you something. Let, 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 me, t- let, me, let me tell you something, God damn it. Let me tell you but something. But the people listening, I'm making a pondering face. Go ahead. This is this is the part where people. This is where I get kicked out of groups at, because people will be talking about these cheating spouses and shit. Sure, like the leader Lila Rashawn and whatever the, um, the director name Antoine is, Fuqua and N- Nicole Murphy and and even with the um, what's the woman name you just said Wendy Williams and all that. Mm-hmm. Like that's fine, but I am a firm believer mm-hmm. as women, we are absolutely magical. We really, 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 really are, and I really need y'all to start acting like it. <laughs> but as women, women who have the Privilege of being wives. Y'all know who the fuck y'all married. And you can't tell me no goddamn different. <laughs> well, there's that. I'm just saying. A lot, a lot of them husbands was trash while they was dating. Either. You know who you living with. Uh-huh. If you living with somebody, you get you get the picture. Mm-hmm. Couple, it only take a few weeks to months to mm-hmm. know, you know, what it is with somebody's character. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, character shows up in a lot of ways when you start living with somebody. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make that another episode because we're running out of time. But, but believe it, my yeah. Dr. Maya Angelou gave us the game. She said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. The first believe time. them. Or, let's just go back to like a first date. If he says, and I've been on one of these too, because now I'm in this in this space of like wanting to be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And then they come back and they're like, oh, well, you know, I ain't really looking for nothing serious. Well, it was nice. It was nice knowing you. Cool. Thank it you was for nice meeting. information. But I'd like to take you out again. I'd rather not even waste your time. No, 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 no. For the fuck what? <laughs> I can fuck when I feel like it. I don't want to fuck you. Like, <laughs> leave me the hell alone. <laughs> I like, yeah. If I wanted to keep you in the rotation, I would. But like, when if, 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 if while you're dating and it's not le- if it's not aligning with what you want, cut that shit so- short. Yeah. That's how we end up wasting all our time. And then you end up six months later either pregnant or looking crazy because you're like, but I thought, I just thought, and, and but he said, and but when we when he making love to me, and no, sis, he told you from jump, he wants you like that. Trust what they said. Why do we do that, ladies? Mm-hmm. Why do we do that? A dude can tell you straight up, mm-hmm. I'm not looking for a relationship. Mm-hmm. And then we go, but I thought Mm-mm. over time. Actually, Mm-mm. you know what? Let me not just put that on my sisters. Dudes Mm-mm. do this too. Yeah. I'm going to be real vulgar. And and I think the fellas in the room will, will believe me. They're all, they all booed up and shit right now. But I think they, I think they agree with me. I'm scared. <clears throat> Ain't no amount of good pussy gonna keep not nan do attached to you if he don't want to be with you. Point blank and the period. We getting thumbs the up. Comma, on the comma, <laughs> the uh, all the other, the forward slash, the backspace, the delete button, control, all delete, all of that. There's no amount of tossing it back. No amount of good head. No Handstands. amount of sloppy toppy. All your best moves. If he don't want to be there, sis, guess what? He ain't gonna be there. Also, a baby won't keep him either. Show sure ain't. So. so. And fellas, that's for y'all too. Yep. Don't just try to shoot up the club to make her stay with you. Yep. Because they be trapping <laughs> people too. Yeah, they, they do. They be trying to trap yeah, folks too. Do. Talk about it, sis. Listen. Talk about this, it. This is a, a not talked about enough Talk topic. about it. That's it real. dudes out here that's trying real. to trap y'all. That's real. I, so. Listen. Real life. This was like before I moved to Phoenix or whatever. This dude, he was like a registered nurse. Had a great little job. Nice mm-hmm. little house. He was a sweetheart. Mm-hmm. Sweetheart. But then he tried to pull that whole, like, um, snatch the condom off and, like, keep it going. Fam, fam, fam. You know what that motherfucker told me? <laughs> what? You'd make a great mom, though. 
<laughs> get your ass you off of me. Your, you don't get your. <laughs> These folks are crazy. Know, you know who's to shoot the club up? All stars? These military dudes. <laughs> Don't let them Damn. impregnate you so they can get them extra benefits. They listen. get paid like double if they have a baby. Listen. Know the game, sis. Don't listen. let the game know you. Oh shit. <laughs> I'm just saying. Don't be Ebony for Players Club, child. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's serious it So have your boundaries. If you know yes. you don't want to be a mom, then do what you make exactly. sure you keep it wrapped up and pilled up and exactly. whatever else you need to do. Exactly. And if somebody tells you that they're looking for a family and you know you don't want a family, then you need to cut that show. I, and I, <laughs> that that's one of my strong ass boundaries too. Because yeah. yeah. I don't I don't want to have children. And so when I do meet guys, um I, I'm open to like p- guys who have children already and that don't want anymore. I can okay. I can I can roll with that. Okay. Nothing under five though because that's a little murky for me and I need them to be able to like walk and talk and tell me what they need. <laughs> um, so like dudes would be like, oh, but no, nah, like, but you're so great and you're so this and but I still want to like let me just figure it out. No 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 no. There's no you trying to figure out because you've been at life. A long ass time by this point, knowing that you wanted children. Yep. You've only known me a short amount of time, and like all of a sudden, you're just gonna toss that idea out the window. Mm-hmm. I'm not the one. And see, that's I'm not the one. so mature and like, you know, clear on your part. Yeah. And I hope that folks listening will take that take away the fact that even if your boundary is not a typical boundary, you know, people find it very hard to understand why a beautiful young woman of childbearing age <laughs> doesn't want to have kids. She just don't want to have fucking kids. I know. Like, it's okay. Lots of men don't want to have kids either. But the thing Those is... Those of you that don't want to, hit me up. 555-443-109. What is that? That's it's my, hot, it's my whole line. It's, hot line. Oh, I thought it was just social security or something. There's so many numbers. <laughs> It was the whole 10 digits. So many digits. Area code. Oh, okay. Yeah. Finish, I mean, finish. the thing is, it makes me proud of the muse. <laughs> she has a boundary that's not like a, a popular boundary per se, like a typical boundary, but she holds true to it because she's not out here trying to just get chose. You ain't about to, to get me she into having chose. your baby. You know what I mean? And if your boundary is that you want to maintain your career, maybe your boundary is that you don't want to work. You want to know that you can have a child and be a stay-at-home mom. Let it be known. Yep. And hold fast to your boundary. Yep. But we gotta get out of here because this 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 is this we give it too many wisdom but, jewels. But, but we gotta, they gotta pay the premium over at the Patreon to get more. Oh, no. Yeah, that's we can true. drop two more though, real quick. Yeah, two more. So um going back to the conversation we just had about my whole situation, um, just make sure that you're defining what you're doing. Yes. Like you don't have to wait until you've had sex. You don't have to wait till six months down the road, yada yada yada. Like you can establish early on like what the intentions are by from, from somebody getting to know you. That's right. Um, why are you attempting to waste my time if you just trying to smash? Like That's right. And, and that you goes know for I, us, too. Right. Define what we're doing. Yeah. You know, sure. like, don't string these dudes along. At all. Because then he goes out with an axe to grind between somebody else's legs. Oh, girl. And that's not, that's not good for any oh, of us. Oh, la. <laughs> mm. So make sure that you're clear up front. You know yeah. you don't want a relationship. And if you're not sure what's happening, you yeah. know, define it. Yeah. And then the other one, the guy said to let y'all know to stop going through them goddamn phones. Because <laughs> if you are led to go through the goddamn phone in the first place, you be knowing, sis. You already knew of some shit popping off. So the last point is just trust your gut. Trust like, your gut. if you feel like you got to go and, and, and snoop through some shit, if you feel like you got to go and be extra recalling numbers and all this other, like, just... Let it go. Even if it doesn't even get that far. Like, we be knowing. Deep you down, know. You know. Listen to you your know. inner voice. Yeah. Because the thing is, your inner voice, that intuition, most of the time, it, it's not lying to you. Mm-mm. It might be exaggerating, but it ain't lying. Mm-hmm. Something's there. It gets you out of some bullshit early and often. <laughs> and as long as you keep not listening to it, sis, you're going to keep mucking through the mud. And if you don't have an inner voice, get you some girlfriends. Uh, subscribe to Venus Clap Bag on iTunes, Google Play, or SoundCloud. Make Slide in sure our DM, child, because I show tell you. Listen, and mm. the more that you hear these conversations, the more your inner voice will develop. Because I understand not everybody out here is getting those keys to the game. They're not. You know, from like They're a not. not everybody's maternal figure feels comfortable having these conversations. That's yeah. fine. Not everybody's got a big sister or a homegirl. We got you. Yeah. Stick with us. Come talk to me. Come talk to me. I will ruin your whole world. 
<laughs> like seriously, I but was listen, blowing up. If you want to get your world ruined some more, <laughs> more than what you've heard on this episode, you want more keys. You want to understand this concept of boundaries and just living your best black life. Yeah, head over to our Patreon because there Ooh. is where you're going to get bonus content that oh. is not available on our free platforms. Yeah. Now we got a lot on our free platforms. We got 10 hour long juicy episodes for you. That's 10 separate episodes that are one hour long each. <laughs> we got that for you for free, but we got even more than that available at patreon.com. Just search for Venus Clapback to get bonus episodes. Um, we'll just be kind of talking a little bit more in depth about black women and mm-hmm. being unapologetically For as low as joyful. $5 a month. $5 a month. All you got to do is pay $5 That's a month. That's just $1 more for the four for four at Wendy's. And oh, that was be- bars again. Those weren't bars. Stop yeah. boosting her up. The, the, One the dollar more than the crew is phone. encouraging this. Um, so come over to Patreon and sign up for the five dollars a month <laughs> so we can get the muse some rap lessons. And <laughs> I was born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. You were born with it, friends. <laughs> Help us to be able to afford this makeup. You know what I'm saying? These hairstyles. <laughs> Help us keep these lights on so you can see the melody. Yes, you know what I'm yes, saying? Pour yes. into the Venus Clapback yes. movement yes. at Patreon.com. It's only $5. All right, so we're going to get out of here. Any parting words, Muse? Don't play yourself, sis. Don't play yourself. <laughs> You're worth more. You really are. You're worth more. So if you got to roll over and look at your baby daddy or your husband like, God damn it. Sorry, you're, you're in it. But if you're single... <laughs> You're never <laughs> trapped. You ain't trapped, but you know, folks, it takes them a little bit longer. Right. When they, you know, got them extra ass attachments. But if you ain't attached to shit, <laughs> sis, you got time to make a decision, an informed ass decision. <laughs> I'm just telling you, get the fuck out. It's never too late to do what you need to do. It's not. And it starts with jarring boundaries, period. Sure. Sure. Yeah. We'll just go on to another episode. So you got to catch us next time. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to Venus Clapback. Follow us, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you next time. I'm Coco. Yo soy Sumusta. <laughs> and thank you again. This is Venus Clapback.